In this lesson, we're going to be talking about functions, and functions are going to be a day in life of every single time that you program. You're going to have to involve some functions, and one of the things that I see a lot of students fail to do or recognize is that when we create these functions, that they're not actually not being used until you actually call them. And we're going to show you several examples in this video on having functions, calling the functions, and hopefully you're going to start seeing the pattern of, hey, I totally understand this part here about functions. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get inside of the code here. And I'm in the Python folder, lessons, and then I'm in the functions.py as far as the file goes. I'm going to go ahead and collapse that and kind of talk a little bit about these notes here. But uh, just to reinforce this idea here, uh, you know, functions, they are a way to kind of group code together. Uh, we are going to give it a name, and then in order for the function to be ran, meaning that the, the lines of code inside that function are not actually ran until that function is called. Okay. And uh, a lot of times we're going to be coming up with a, a function name that talks about what actually happens inside of the little grouping of code. And just like before, whenever we are talking about loops and if blocks, everything in Python is all about indentation. So uh, we're going to reinforce that idea, that concept of whatever's indented inside of the function is the code that will get executed when the function is called. So let's go ahead and write out our very first uh, simple function. So we're defining a simple function here, and it starts off with the keyword of def. We're defining a function. So we're going to do def, and then we're going to hit the space bar, and then we're going to provide it with some sort of name. This is going to be the function name. And so we'll say something like greet, and then we must have left and right parentheses, and we're going to put a colon on there. Now, just like I told you before, any time we are wanting lines of code to only be executed within this function, we must indent it as we see right here. Now, if we were to go ahead and save this and, and run this, we're not going to see anything. And, and again, this is that concept that I was telling you that whenever I'm trying to teach this uh, for students, they write out the code just like this and they try to run it. They're like, hey, I put the print statement here. It's not working. Well, it is working. It's just you created a function. Now it's time to call the function. So let's go ahead and call the function here. So we'll put the little note here. This is calling the function. And you call it by followed by the left and right parentheses. So I'm going to go ahead and save that and run it. And now we get hello. It's printed to our console. Now, important thing that I want you to get out of what we just did is that you can write a function all day, but the code inside here is not going to run unless you call it up. Very similar to uh, notifying a friend. You may want to say hello to them, but you need to call them first on their phone for them to, to let them know, hey, I'm getting ready to use you. Now, again, if I needed to call the function again, I can do greet, again, save it, and then run it. And we just executed this function twice, which is why we see it in our console twice. Now, something interesting with functions is that they are, well, what does that kind of look like? Now, arguments are values that can be given to a function in order to provide some data crunching or data display utilize. In this example here, we're going to do functions with the arguments or with parameters. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and create one, and we're going to call this one user. And inside the parentheses this time, we're actually going to type out the word name. Okay? And just like before, we're going to put our colon in there. And then we're going to print, and again, we're going to uh, put that F there to allow us to haul out a formatted string that's coming in. Now, the way that I always look at parameters or arguments is, hey, this 
is a placeholder value. It's almost like an envelope. And this function has an envelope. And I'm going to stuff somebody's name in this envelope here. And I'm going to reference it somewhere in the code. So what do I mean? How do we call it by putting something inside of the envelope? So we're going to say, we're going to say calling the function with an argument. And we're going to do greet user. And notice that inside of our envelope, inside of our parentheses here, we're putting the word Alice. So now if I go ahead and save this, and I'm going to highlight this and run it, we now see hello Alice. We don't see hello name. And that's because we told our program, hey, I know you have an envelope. In here, I'm going to put the word Alice inside your envelope and I'm calling it name. It's just a variable, right? It's a value placeholder that I can reference later on. You are able to have multiple parameters or multiple arguments inside of your functions that you define. And let's look at a result of this or an example of this. So we're going to create a function that takes two arguments and returns the sum of those two arguments. And we're going to call this one add. So we're going to do f add. And usually you can add in generics like a, b, just like what it's suggesting here. But I'm going to put in here uh, number one and then number two. Now I want to add a little bit of clarity for us here. And if we were to uh, simply do something like this, we can say result equals number one plus number two. And then we can come down here and we can return a result. Now that's something that we haven't talked about yet is that functions can return things. So we'll put this in our notes up here. Functions can return a value using the keyword of return. Return keyword is followed by the value or meaning like the data that you would like that function to return. So in this example here, we're going to return the result. And so that means down here, we can do a call the function to print the result. We can do the following. We can say print and then add two comma three. And if we save this and run it, we get five. And again, this function allows us to put in anything that we'd want here, like numbers, right? To be able to be added together. It's the way that this works is number one, there's that envelope. Two is going inside of that first envelope. Three is going inside of that second envelope. And we are labeling it right here. This is number one, number two. So that way we can later reference what we are shoving in that envelope and utilize it here and here. So hopefully that makes sense there. Let's see what else we have to do here. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and do a little bit of a challenge one here for you. Let's go ahead and create a function that will take two numbers, two arguments, and return the result of multiplying those two arguments. Let me go ahead and scroll up. Go ahead and pause the video. We're going to call this one multiply and see if you can follow the same pattern that we did above, but this time we're going to be doing multiplication. And again, it's totally okay to reutilize these parameters that we saw up here. Number one, number two, if you want, because uh, that's what I'm going to be doing because it doesn't affect anything outside of that function. We can reutilize those names. So go ahead and pause the video and see what you get. All right, well, hopefully you ended up getting something that looks like this. We're going to define our function, multiply. We're going to do number one and number two. We're going to do the exact same thing that we did before. We're going to do result equals number one times number two. And then we're going to return the result. Let's go ahead and call the multiplication one. And for that, we're going to do multiply two times three. So let's go ahead and highlight this and run it. We get six. All right, so here is one of our final challenges that we have here while we're going through this video of learning a little bit about functions. 
So what I want us to do is I want us to create a function that will convert Celsius to Fahrenheit. It should return the Fahrenheit number. So I'm gonna kind of stub out some code that we should follow along with and try to do. So we're gonna do challenge, create a function that will take in one argument and return the Fahrenheit of that argument. There we go. Let me go ahead and spell Fahrenheit properly. So it's going to take in the Celsius and we need to convert the Celsius to Fahrenheit. Here is the notes that I have for this to also include a formula where we want to convert the Celsius to Fahrenheit. The formula that we need to use is the Celsius. You multiply that by 9 fifths and then you add 32 to the end of that in order to get the Fahrenheit. Parameters what we should probably use on there is going to be Celsius, and then it's going to return the Fahrenheit. So go ahead and pause the video, see if you can still follow the pattern that we put up here. Let's give good names for our arguments and variables, because that's what we want to keep instilling in you as you're going through this. So pause the video, see if you're able to get it. All right, hopefully you ended up getting this. If not, we're going to go through this. So we're first going to write our function, right? We want Celsius to Fahrenheit. And then as far as our parameter, our argument, we're gonna make that Celsius. And then we need to create a variable. So instead of result, like we did before, let's use something that's really nice and clear, concise, and that's going to be Fahrenheit. And then we're just gonna plug in our formula that we have right there. And then we want to return the result, right? We created a variable here. We are utilizing the parameter that's going to be coming in. And then we're just doing some simple math right here. And then we're just returning what that value is. Now, I told you before that we, in functions, right, they can return a value. Many times as you're programming it, you're not going to be printing things from it. You're typically going to be storing whatever that function gave you into a variable. And so what I want to show you here on this is we can say, for example, let temp1 equal, and then we're going to do Celsius to Fahrenheit, right? So we all agree that uh, zero degrees Celsius, right, that's freezing, would equate to 32. So let's test out our, our function here. So we're also going to need to print temp1, and let's get rid of the let here. So we're going to do temp1 equals, and then Celsius to Fahrenheit. We threw in the zero that we see right here. So it's gonna run through the calculations. Zero times nine fifths, right? And anything times zero is gonna be zero. And then we added 32. So we should get 32. Let's go ahead and highlight it and run it. And there we go, we get 32. Let's try another one. We'll do temp two. And this time we'll throw in 100. We'll go ahead and save that run it once we print it and we should get 212 let's go ahead and run it and there we go now we get 212 perfect so we created something that's reusable we didn't need to put in anything we're just as far as a little formula for each one of these we are reusing the same formula over and over in order to make a few calculations for us so as we go further along in the course, of course, we're going to have some more challenges that are going to be involving functions. You're going to have projects going to, that are going to be involving functions. So that's what we want you to get out of this lesson is functions are going to be pieces of code that will only get used if you decide to call them and that they are typically pieces of code blocks that are reusable. They're only code that you want executed whenever you call them and they are reusable. So hopefully this lesson made sense and we have challenges that will help you further learn about functions in Python. See you in the next video.